Well, hello guys. Welcome back to another episode of Everyday EDC. My name is Tyler, and today we have a very we have a review for you <laughs> of the Savivi Keen Netter. All right, so the Savivi Keen Netter. This was an interesting one. This was Savivi's, I think, their first ever Tonto style blade. Spoiler alert. So let's go through our normal rotation and then we'll get to some other things and with other stuff, right? So this is a uh, micarta scale. This is what I like to call the dog treat color micarta. It's very nice and exquisite and tastes just like chicken. We have a backspacer right here, which is also dog treat style micarta for your smaller dogs. I would like to call this a chihuahua style. This has a lanyard, uh, I'm going to call it a lanyard post, which I love this. This is actually awesome because they didn't emphasize anything. It doesn't, it doesn't compromise anything. There's nothing wrong with doing this for those of you lanyard people. So kudos to that. That's hats off there. Obviously, we have an ambidextrous pocket clip on both sides, and extremely deep carry. Let's see, it'll carry about just right there. Good thing. Pot clip has a nice swoop and then an upswept. The bill is a little large, but it's not awful. I mean, it does stick a little proud. You might want to bend that down if this is the knife for you. We do have some stainless steel liners and some chamfered edges all the way around. So, you know, typical Savivi style. Let's talk about Savivi's tastes. We'll bust out the Civivi Elementum here. And, you know, obviously these two are different, but it's like the same exact DNA, right? They have the chamfered G10 or chamfered micarta, you know, your pocket clip that sticks proud of the liners to save whatever cost that is, despite these already starting to get on the upper scale of the budgets. They usually go ambidextrous or ambidextrous, but this is not. They usually go with T8 Torx heads with everything except for T6 on the pocket clip, which they are. They are almost always on bearings. They are almost always flippers. And here you go. Cool Civivi logo right there. Now, let's get a flip in. So the coolest part... Well, let's talk about the blade, then we'll talk about some other things. So this is a combination grind blade. This is a stonewash finish with a very nice hollow grind right here on the recurve part of the Tonto. And then for the pointed portion of the Tonto, we have a flat grind, which what that does is that allows for more thickness to go to the tip of the blade, providing a little bit more sturdy tip, which looking at it here, I'm going to compare it on some other knives, but it does seem like a pretty damn sturdy tip. We have a swedge running about half the length of the blade, a little bit longer, carrying some of that strength from the spine and the original thickness of the spine all the way down towards the tip. We have some jimping right here, typical Civivi jimping. Let's see. Eh, it's a little bit more, we'll call it more quantity of jimping on this one. Um, but they kind of feel the same. Maybe that's just me saying it to cover my tracks. We have a stop bar here, which I did mention. And then we have a forward finger choil that, you know what, I guess kudos for doing it and making the attempt, but uh, give me a, yeah, we'll talk about that. So what's really cool about this blade is it has a fuller that runs through here, some thumb, uh, some thumb studs, and then a nice flipper tab. And when I say nice flipper tab, this thing is not a proud flipper tab at all. It has a ton of jimping on it to give you a lot of traction, and it works really well. The one thing that I truly enjoyed about this knife is that it actually is kind of hard to fail. Now, I can fail it, but I noticed myself when I first flipped it, it just like, whoop, like, and that's just a little push button because the way this is designed, you can push button it. You can light switch it. You can open it with the fuller in the reverse flick style. You can open it with the thumb stud, reverse flick style. You can use the thumb stud with your thumb or you can use the fuller with your thumb and open it up. And last but not least, I love when people do this. Well, you can spidey drop it. Yeah, you can do that with almost any knife. Point here being, if you're looking for something super fidgety, I mean, the action on this is pretty darn good. This is, I would say, above average for Civivi. And that's that's a good thing here. Second, let's note this, this hollow, I'm sorry, this recurve 
right here. It's a very gradual recurve, and I've grown to appreciate and freaking hate recurves just because of my sharpening setup. Uh, as I said before, I don't have the KME. I don't have any of the Spyderco Sharp Maker, which I think I'm probably going to get that one. But, uh, yeah, so. And give me, my comment, give, give me some comments below. I don't want to spend too much money. The Spyderco Sharp Maker, I think that's the one with the rods. I might be going with that one for any recurve blade. I don't have too many recurves, but just, yeah, let me know what you think. Really cool about this. I don't know if you guys can see. This thing came from the factory with almost a mirror edge. Like, it's almost a mirror polish on this edge. I can't really demonstrate that as good as somebody, say, like the Practical Blade Corey over there. He does a really good demonstration of his mirror edges that he puts on there. And I thoroughly, thoroughly appreciate those. I mean, they, they he does some really, really good work. Sorry, let me clean off my mat because I'm recording while I'm doing it. All right, so I think we kind of hit on everything. I am going get to in, get into some specs. We are going to get into some size comparisons. I will recap and then give my overall thoughts on this knife and whether or not it is worth it. For those of you waiting for the price of this guy, this price is coming in at $72 on Blade HQ. The Micarta version is coming in at like $73.50. Go ahead. You know, at that point, if you, if, if you guys are hurting that bad for business and money, go ahead and take my extra $1.50. That's cool. One thing I didn't notice or mention, let's see here. As in also typical Civivi fashion, we have excellent, excellent cutouts on the liners on the show side. The liner lock side does not have any cutouts, but this does a really good job of weight relieving, and Civivi is pretty notorious for taking a lot of material out of those, sta out of those uh, liners. Zoop. All right, let's get your weight. The weight on the Keen Natter is coming in at 3.7 ounces. Not too light. It's almost approaching that 4-ounce mark, but it's a fairly long knife. So I'm not going to say large, but it's just fairly long. And for that reason, I don't fault the 3.7 ounces. And actually, once we see what this is going on here, once we see the length, so the overall blade length is coming in right at three and a half inches, and the cutting edge is coming in at right at three and a quarter. Overall length of the knife itself is coming in at eight and a quarter inches. So for 3.7, you're getting a 3.5 inch blade. I'm not mad. That's not something that I would ever complain about. And actually weight's nothing that I would ever really complain about. Blade stock's coming in at 145 thousandths. The behind the edge thickness of the recurve, let's see here. What the fuck? Well, let's take that out. Coming in at not much more. It's about 20 thousandths behind the hollow grind side. And then the Tonto side is coming in at just about 20 thousandths too. So it, what they're really trying to do there is really just carry a, a more material down to this tip. So 20 thousandths behind the edge for a knife that is, has 145 or 145 thousandths blade stock thickness, I'm not really mad at. That's actually pretty good. And the overall height in your pocket is coming in at a 1.3 or 1.13, which is not bad at all considering the Spyderco Manix 2 is coming in at a 1.74, the Spyderco Para 3 is coming in at a 1.66, and the Spyderco Para 2 is coming in at a 1.6. The overall height in your pocket's coming in right at a whopping average half of an inch. So, the guys, the half of an inch mark is really the average for most knives. I've seen them when they're contoured range up to 0.6, and I've seen them when they're ultra thin. I've seen one, I think it was, go down. I don't remember what it was, down to like a 0.36. All right, let's get you guys some size comparisons. Here is your Rat Model 1 with some, that's not even patina anymore. That thing's just rusting. I need to take care of that. Here is your Rat Model 2. Let's try to line these up. It's just about as long as your Rat Model 1. Maybe slightly shorter. I don't know if uh, the, the camera angle really lends itself to show it. it, it it's slightly shorter. And the Rat Model 2, obviously, much shorter. Let us go into your Feldspar Sandwich. Here is your Feldspar in Micarta, which does the Micarta so much freaking better than Savivi has done their Micarta. I, I swear, their Micarta feels like a epoxy, like, 
dunked my card up. This one just feels like fabric. It's 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 just a cool it's CJRB does it. Artisan Cutlery does some of the best my card I've ever felt. And that's not saying too much. I'm not a my card connoisseur, I'm just saying. Anyways, the large felt bar is coming in at just short of the overall length of this, and the mini felt bar is coming in at obviously much shorter. Is that rust on my mini felt bar again? I need to like no, just dirt. I, guys, I need to do like a spa day cleanup with my knives. Maybe I'll have like a knife talk session and just clean a sh crap ton of my knives. All right. Now, to compare it with some of its Savivi brethren. <laughs> Here is the Savivi Brigand in Rub Brass in Damascus and the Savivi Elementum in S35VN. As we can see, it's a little bit longer than the rub brass just because of the pommel of the bl of the pommel of the handles coming out a little bit more proud than the actual uh, brigand. Whereas the brigand, if you look, the blade the blade lengths short of that finger choil are very much the same. So you just get a little bit more handle length with the Savivi Keen Natter, and then you get a lot less with the Savivi Elementum. Let's see here. Yeah, about a quarter of an inch less on the blade. If, if I definitely forgot to mention the blade steel. This is N690, and a lot of people that are newer aren't going to know what N690 is. A lot of people that aren't newer are going to be like, shut up. I'm going to go into some details about N690 here in a second. Here is the, or the Spyderco Shaman, and your Spyderco Astute. Obviously, the Shaman, it's kind of interesting. The Shaman's just as long as the Keen Natter. The Astute's coming in, obviously, much shorter. I'm trying to give you guys some Spyderco comparisons. Some Spyderco comparisons. Because I really don't have... I have my PM2s, but I don't really want to use the Tontos for comparison knives. I thought I was going to. I'm not doing it. So the N690. Let me grab my notes. N690, from what I'm, I'm reading, is similar to VG10. In the past, people compared it to 440C but it's turning out to be closer to a VG10 or 154CM material. This is a very, very, very much stainless. This is coming in at 17% chromium. You have 1.1% molybdenum, and then you have 1.5% cobalt. All of those elements combined really lead to a lot of corrosion resistance. That's a good thing. It's coming in at barely any vanadium and then 1% carbon. So, you know, the edge retention on this isn't going to be through the roof, but your toughness, I think, would be all right, and your stainlessness is going to be pretty good. The edge retention, you're going to, you know, it's not going to be bad. It'll probably be better than, you know, your 9CRs and stuff, but not quite as good as some of the S30s. Well, definitely not as good as, like, your S30 or S35. <laughs> so it's a quick recap. Quick. <laughs> Quick recap. This is the uh, Savivi Keen Natter Bowler N690. This is coming in with a compound grind of hollow grind here, flat grind here, Tonto style blade with a fuller, thumb studs, and a flipper tab. It's got jimping all along the spine. The spine is chamfered down very, very nicely. Like, there's no sharp edges on this knife. That's very cool. Has some milled out liners with some dog treat micarta scales that, you know, and second thought, I really gave this, as I'm reviewing this, I gave this a second thought, and I should stop saying chicken flavored it looks more like beef going into this this is a t8 screws with a deep carry pocket clip that is ambidextrous we always talk about savivi's infamous or should i say famous fit and finish quality but let's take a look here on the uh pocket clip screw hole that is not being used we have a burr there on the micarta yeah they should have taken care of that that's a little annoying you know you pay what is this, 72 or 73.50 for a knife in the budget brand? You're getting a lot for it. You know, Bowler N690 is no joke. It's, it's a good material. And you're getting this compound grind, so a little bit more work went into it. You have the milled out scales and bond bearings. I mean, so you're getting a lot, but, you know, and I'm sure this is probably one of the few that has this, but why why would you give me this pocket clip with this this hole like that? that that's annoying. And, yeah. So, what do I like about this knife? Obviously, number one like about this knife is the fidget factor, guys. The fidget factor on this is going to satisfy every itch possible, and they did it in such a sleek and discreet way. This pocket clip, or I'm sorry, this flipper tab is very, very short and fat, but you, it works very well. 
the detent is almost perfectly tuned on this knife to really lend itself that this is just fun to flip and fidget with. Second leg. I really appreciate the fact that they have this lanyard bar that is not emphasized by anything. It's out of the way, and nobody's going to look at it and be like, ugh. No, it's just it's something there for those of you that want to put a lanyard on this. And then the rest of us that don't, don't have to freaking look at it. The other thing is, is that this thing has a very, very deep carry pocket clip to the point where you don't even see the knife. I mean, we appreciate that. This is going to be very deep carry because this is a longer knife, but that's nice. I mean, it's just a good carry friendly situation there we do really like the bowler n690 that's the first time savivi's ever used bowler n690 and you know kudos because that's a really good blade steel to get on there even for 72 dollars and me kind of complaining about this n690 is it, it's a good blade steel this thing came out of the box wicked sharp and with this mirror edge i couldn't like i was like not cutting paper and i think my paper cutting skills are awful but this thing just let's see if you guys can see it just right there, just absolutely wicked sharp. So very, very cool that this came out of the box so sharp. A lot of Civivis do, but this thing is deceivingly sharp. And for a Tonto and everything that it comes with, I really appreciate the time and this mirror edge that they put on there. Absolutely insane. And last of my likes are I really, truly like the way this blade shape looks. I like the, what they did with the compound grind, just kind of giving everybody... You know, most people don't get to feel a compound grind short of $250, $300. So you're getting that for $72. Bucks. You get these thumb studs right here that are very functional. You get the flipper tab that is very functional. And you also get a fuller that is very functional. Let's move into my dislikes. First and foremost, the ergonomics of this guy, they're, they're, they're kind of shit. Um, excuse the language, but it feels like a hot spot right where my pointer finger is right here. This feels like a hot spot. It's like pinching on something. If you squeeze just a little bit too hard, you can feel it. I can definitely feel that pocket clip. And the choked up position, while it's not totally uncomfortable, it is just, like, I hate when they do these half finger choils. Like, if you're going to do a freaking finger choil, where's my brigand? If you're going to do a freaking finger choil, do a freaking finger choil, right? Get your whole finger in there, and it just, yeah, it's, it's nice like that. That just reminds me of the smock when you got that smock finger choil in there, and just, blah. Yeah, I, I, I'm not a huge fan of that at all. And I know that's just a design language. It's just something that they chose to do, and I just don't appreciate it like somebody else might. The blade. I'm not a huge fan of recurves, although I understand how they're helpful. But I think this looks awesome. But functionally, there's something about this that I'm just not a fan of. Using it the little bit that I've used it, and, and it's just... <sighs> I'm, I'm not a huge Tonto guy in the first place. There's a couple knives that swayed me, and this one almost deters me if I didn't realize this wasn't your standard Tonto. I just, functional of this, the, the functionality of this blade combined with the ergonomics just kind of lead it to a, ugh, you know, it just leaves a weird feeling in the mouth. The micarta, the beef jerky looking dog treat beef chicken mixture that you have going on with this micarta here, like, I know this is just the color, but... That thing is fugly. That is a nasty looking color, and it doesn't even feel good in the hand. Like I said, CJRB's micarta does a much better job. And I've already mentioned the finger choil. Sorry, I was kind of using my notes to go off of it. I had a lot to say. So overall, can I recommend this knife? You know, for the materials and Civivi, for 72 bucks, it's a higher price Civivi, but you're getting a lot, and you're getting a really good blade steel. If you're really excited about a Tonto Civivi, I mean, other than checking out the new one that's out there, I forgot what the name of it is, but you guys should check that one out. This thing lends a lot to Fidget Factor. It's a fun knife, and if you're one of those guys that really doesn't need to use a hard-use knife, but you want some Fidget Factor for 72 bucks, you know, maybe this is your guy. For everybody else, I'm, I'm not going to recommend this. This is kind of my least favorite Civivi uh, in a while, guys. I just, there's... I think I thought it looked really cool, and then I got it in hand, and there's just nothing special about it. It's another Civivi, but then they like they tried something new, and I think they fell a little short in a lot of areas. Again, that new one coming out, forgot the name of it, I think is supposed to replace this. I don't know if this thing fell on its face or not, but uh, the new one looks good. It's a little bit beefier looking Tonto, uh, and, and or maybe it's the same. I don't know. They like to use a lot of the same designs. It just looks more normal. And this recurve and everything, okay. 
kudos again. I'm staring at this mirror edge that you guys probably can't see that well, and I've never seen a mirror edge from the factory, so that is fantastic. They did a fantastic job there. All in all, 72 bucks. Once again, I wouldn't recommend it, uh, but if it's your cup of tea and it speaks to you, then yeah, but this isn't something I'm going to tell anybody to go and purchase on any list of mine. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Tyler. This has been Everyday EDC. You guys stay sharp, stay safe, and have a great freaking rest of your day. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. It genuinely means a lot. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe, hit the thumbs up, leave a comment. If you didn't like it, give me some feedback in the comments below and hit that thumbs down button. In case you guys don't know, I do have a Patreon, which will be listed right here. In that Patreon, we're giving bi-monthly giveaways to just the Patreons based on the number of Patreons that we have in the Patreon. We will also be giving discounts on all the knives that I sell based on the number of Patreons. My name is Tyler. This is Everyday EDC. You guys stay sharp, stay safe, and have a great day.